Good day, folks. It's DIY Guy123 here, bringing you another do it yourself video. Today, I'm going to show you about some new alignment equipment I picked up. Check my channel for other videos. It shows precise ways to measure toe, caster, and camber. And this is just more information on the same type of thing, but I've got new equipment today. These are all products from Auto Solo. I'll put a link in the description, and they were kind enough to give me a discount code for any of my viewers if you want to buy from them, so check that out. This is a new wheel clamp. Now some types of clamps, like the ones in my other videos, grip on the lip of the rim, and some rim profiles aren't really conducive to being grabbed that way. I see this type is not at all designed that way. It grips basically on the side of the sidewall, right here, it bumps up against the sidewall, and then these grips grip onto the tread of the tire and it's really easy to install. So you basically just hang it on the top of the tire. There's a bubble level here, and I'm tightening a wheel here, and it basically draws this in and draws this in and draws this in. So now that's really on there. It's pretty fast to install. The wheel clamp has a bracket you see installed here. If you pull this pin out, that bracket comes out, and you can install this second sized set of brackets for different size wheels. So it comes with both of those sets of brackets. One of the things about it is you need to make sure that you set it up properly. If you had a sidewall that had a bulge in a, play, in a certain spot and not in somewhere else, it could kind of cause this to be out a little bit. So what they've done to prevent any error from creeping in to the measurement due to the sidewall bulge, if there even is one, is they've provided a, a digital level and the concept is that you want to measure how plumb the rim is, basically how vertical the rim is, how straight up and down it is. Take a measurement of that, and if the clamp doesn't line up with that same measurement, you can adjust the position of the clamp so that it is perfectly aligned with the rim. Now, there's a level that they provide that you can do that with, but you need to come up with a straight edge that will measure on the front surface of the rim. If I have this regular small carpenter square, take that part and set it aside, I can measure from the these flat surfaces as, as I've got shown there. Now this level is magnetic. Basically, uh, the idea is that you would measure the angle of the rim to vertical, and then when your wheel clamp is installed, you'd calibrate the position of the wheel clamp based on the measurement that you were taking at this digital level. And so calibrate it. And if this measurement is not the same as what you measured earlier, you can pull on this or push on this to set it. So that's the idea of this digital level. I've fiddled with this a few times and it, it came out basically the same without any need for calibration, but that's this wheel. You may have a tire that's got a abnormality so it's a good thing to check. So now that the wheel clamp is on there they also offer this digital gauge. They've called it a digital camber gauge but it can be used for both camber and caster. So the way you would use it is you align this bubble right here to make sure that the gauge is level this way and then you take your reading. So in this case it's 0.1 degrees out at the top. So you know pretty close to zero. That's camber. Now to measure caster you need to make sure that this gauge is in the center of the magnetic plate right here and get your wheels on top of the turn plates. To measure caster, you rotate the wheel out 20 degrees, re-zero your camber gauge, and then rotate it in 20 degrees and take a measurement, and that is your caster angle. So we're at about 20 degrees on the gauge, and I'm going to zero my camber gauge. In this case, I'm using it to measure caster. That's zeroed out. Now I'll go 20 degrees the other way. Okay, we're 20 degrees the other way, and there is four and a half degrees on my caster measurement. That's how you measure camber and caster. You do that on both sides, and you'll get the data for both sides of your car. There are two ways to get on top of these turn plates. You can jack the car up and lower it down, but I don't like that method because it when your suspension compresses, the wheels move outward and it basically puts a strain on these pins. So it, they're built to take it, but it's just not the way I prefer to do it. So what I like to do is drive onto the ramps. But if you just drive up here, you have, you have a tendency for the wheel to kind of shift the position of the, and it also will basically pull on the turntable to lift the vehicle up, it'll pull on the top. So they come with this guard right here that you put in this position and it basically minimizes the amount of pull on this from the tire, this part. However, it worked fine, but I'd prefer another route. And I've made these 
little ramps here. Basically, it's a piece of half inch plywood and another piece, and you notice they overlap, and that's so that I can move this out of the way, put the wooden ramp in place, and you'll notice I've got this piece beveled and this piece beveled, so it's a very gradual transition to drive up there. What you really want is before you get close to this surface, the vehicle to already be at the height of the top of the surface. So it basically rolls on. You're not using any big power to pull up on there. So I've built the ramp that on the front driver's side, I push this ramp that way tight to the tire. And then I push this tight to the ramp. On this side, to make it easier to drive up, this ramp is a different length. This one this from here to here is shorter. So I'm only driving up of one ramp at a time. But if I push this all the way to the tire, that wouldn't be in the right position. So what I've done is built a little spacer right there. Then I have the ramp. Then I put the turn plate up against the whole works and I pull this spacer out. And now the vehicle is only rising up on the other ramp, then there's surface then the other ramp on the top level, and then this surface right here on the top level. So it's a very gradual thing, and I've positioned these uh, turn plates, so when the tire's in the center here, it'll be in the center there. Now, the other thing is, how do you know when to stop rolling ahead? If I take one of the included wheel chocks and put it on the back wheel and put a mark on the floor, if I measure back 29 inches, and position my two chocks, I put them both right there. If I drive ahead until I feel those chocks slow the vehicle down, then I'll be in the center right there. Let's see if it works. So there we are, centered. I didn't actually have to touch the gas at all. Just putting it in drive at a fast idle was enough to roll up. And there are the two wheel chocks. Once you're in place, you pull the pins out and you'll notice this plate shift a little bit. That's totally okay. It's designed to do that and you're free to perform your caster measurement. So that's an overview on how to do wheel alignments in your own garage. You can do it yourself. If you like my videos, subscribe. I do all kinds of stuff like this and I'd be happy to share.